They're trying to get any indication on what this will be for Frank. It was very normal in his speech to the team before the game, just like any other game. But you can tell here on the sidelines, Nebraska is fired up. This is about as much as fired up as I've seen him this entire year, guys. So hopefully that bodes well. Also, the last time Nebraska played here and Ralphie couldn't make the turn around the field, Nebraska won in 99. All right. And Nebraska won the toss, ladies and gentlemen. The Huskers have deferred to the second half. Colorado will get the football to open the ball game. Joel Klatt. Sophomore walk-on from Arvada, Colorado. He was an outstanding football and baseball player in high school. Adrian Fiala, he's a 21-year-old sophomore, so not all sophomores are created equal. Big, strong <laughs> kid, 6'4", 195. And what his teammates say about him is he's, he has a great investment. Now, what do they mean by that, a great investment? Well, he is, he's put his own time and money into this whole thing. After his first game, uh, Jim, against Colorado City, he threw for 402 yards and four touchdowns. That's quite a debut for a walk-on sophomore. But after his first game, low-key man that he is, on Monday he walked over to administration and paid his tuition bill. So that is what they're talking about here. Maybe strictly in the sense of, not strictly in the sense of money, but he has invested his own time, his own interests, his own money, and all the other things to go with it to making this program work. And that is what he wanted to do. He wanted to come back here after watching the game two years ago. He wanted to come back here and be part of this process. Not so much, uh, you know, to be kind of the all-star type guy, but to do what he could to contribute to this program and to get his education, as he indicated. So they, uh, they like him. The guys on this football team like him. He's just uh, 21 years old. Uh, he's got a lot of moxie. He's got a lot of moxie for a guy. Mike Machetti was that way, the quarterback here a couple of years ago. A lot of moxie for a young man. He also played some minor league baseball. So they've had good success with these people. And Joel can throw it well, as we said earlier ago. He, he's had that shoulder trouble, but it appears at least not the short range, but immediate range, he can throw it. The intermediate range, maybe long, it might be a problem. We'll see as, a, as this game goes. Let's cook the walk on from Carney. I beg your pardon, Seward. The Funk Farmer Carney, Kyle Larson, is going to be talked about a lot today as he sends the ball toward the five yard line. And Bloom has it off the carom at the goal line, five to the 10, and he's drilled at the eight yard line. He is thrown back on a coverage made play by Kurt Tomashevitz, the senior from Shelby, near Columbus, and Nebraska's kick team amplifies the start of this ball game. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. And that time, Mr. Bloom was almost a dead duck as he let the ball bounce around. He got it at the goal line. By that time, Thomas Shevitz had zeroed in on him. Ball took kind of a quirky bounce. It bounced left and came back to the right, and Bloom able to corral it. But Thomas Shevitz was there to stop him inside the 10-yard line. Platt has 207 completions and 314 attempts, 18 touchdowns, eight interceptions. Bloom goes in motion, and they fake it to him, hand it off to the deep back Calhoun, zigzags at the nine, and is dragged down by Nebraska's Daniel Bullocks, the rover man who came up on run support at the 10-yard line. Just a one-yard advance, and it means second down and about nine. Calhoun, pretty good, but the run has disappeared from the offense of Colorado, Adrian Fiala. Hard to believe. Well, they were trying to run motion. They run that fa uh, flash play. They fake it, Jim. That's a speed play. They fake it, try to get the attention of the backers and the corners, and then come right back with Calhoun. Here's down two. They have excellent receivers on each side of Clatt, McCoy, and Hackett. In motion out of the backfield goes Calhoun on second and nine from the 10. Short drop, and he throws the ball incomplete. He wanted Hackett on a quick down and out at the 14-yard line. Hollowell there helping out Ricketts, too. Hackett is wide to the right. Donahoe wide to the right. McCoy wide to the left. Cut a long touchdown pass against Nebraska a year ago. Third down and nine, just outside the 10. Opening series, Clatt under. Barks the count. Gets the snap. Retreats. Sets up. Heat on. Throws. Pass is dropped at the 29-yard line as Hackett went high. Carriker was putting pressure on Clatt. Great drop by Barrett Rude that time to get in the passing route. He was up there. That part of the reason that ball was thrown up a little bit by Clatt to the receiver. Barrett Rude was in the lane and it went up over the uh, receiver's fingertips. Josh Davis for a 27th return. Good snap and a good kick. It's in the air. Davis retreats, has the catch, makes it at the 50. Flag down, shakes a tackle at the Colorado 49 and is buried at the 48-yard line. Might very well have been interfered with. 42-yard punt, five-yard return. And here's Laurie. 15 yards. First Interference, 15 yards. Near side hash mark on the option. Lord will keep it, gets a block, then is tackled, thrown out of bounds at the line of scrimmage. At the 36, he was chased down by Arika Dawn, the sophomore Will linebacker from Sugarland, Texas. Davies and Corey Ross in the eye. 
A couple of receivers in Flo Ellen goes in motion. On second and 10 from the 36, handed off to Ross. He has a hole. He's to the 35 and his Bulldog down near the 31 yard line. It was Gabe Nineheis, the senior right end from St. Charles, Illinois, who had a very good game against Nebraska and Lincoln a year ago. Got a hold of Corey Ross up high and drove him into the grass. It's third down now for the Big Red at about five from the buff 31 and a half. Nice hole there to start with. Uh, Mike Erickson, Josh Sewell, Brandon Coe up front creating that hole, but it closed very quickly. It creates that third down play, the third and five. Arian tight to the left, flew on wide to the left, Pilkington wide to the right, lone setback, that's the fullback Judd Davies, third down five and a half, buff 31, no score, opening couple of minutes of the ball game, and an option play near side for Lord, will keep it, 30 gets to the 28, and that's it. Short of a first down, and needed to get to the 26, but in front of him was Clyde Sorrell, the rover man, the senior from Aurora, Colorado, and if the Huskers got the ball first and 10 of the buff 36, they've gotten it now to the 27 and a half, and it is fourth down for Frank and company. Nebraska apparently will go for it on fourth down and about two at 12.51, scoreless first quarter. Kyle Larson would have to pooch it inside the five to make a punt worth the money. And now the Big Red, which has only been efficient on about 30% of its third down opportunities, sees an even lower percentage on fourth down. Out of the backfield, just one setback. Three wide receivers, Wiley, a blocker goes in motion, handed off to Davies, Davies gets the ball, Davies gets to the 27, is drilled down, don't think he got there. Sean Tufts, the senior from Englewood, Colorado, a Butkus Award candidate, drove Judd Davies sideways, and where they spot it down, I don't believe Nebraska got the first down. I think it was short, Jim. Sean Tufts, characterized by the coaching staff, as one of the best linebackers ever to play at Colorado. He's in there on the hit. They uh, they went over Erickson and Sewell, right between Erickson and Sewell. And Tufts filled that gap and stopped, uh, stopped the ball carry, stopped Davies about half a yard short. Four downs, nine yards. That was what Nebraska is able to get on its first possession. And here's Colorado's second possession. A lot better field position. First time it was around the 10. Now it's at the Golden Buffalo 26. CU moving from right to left or from south to north here in the first quarter of the ball game. Into a bit of a breeze, but sudden shining down on Colorado and Nebraska in a big way today. Fake to Calhoun, rolling right, dump pass underneath for the tight end, Jesse Wallace. It's low for him, got a pop from Pat Ricketts at the 25, slot man right, wide man right to lone setback for Klatt, second and 10 on a stretch play, hands it off to Calhoun, broke a tackle, but then was harassed by Ryan Bingham and thrown down with the help of Bernard Thomas after a short gain up to perhaps the 29. McCoy wide right, Calhoun out of the huddle wide to the right, Donahoe in a slot to the right, so three wide outs there, two wide outs left, just the lone setback, and that's the quarterback, Platt, but in the interim, the right tackle, Carl Allis, the tight and right tackle, anticipates the snap count, that'll cost Barnett's Prior to five. snap, ball start offense. Five yards, still third down. Carriker has moved now to a defensive tackle spot. On the left side, they'll challenge Alice there as after the shotgun snap. Platt is chased, eludes the rush, looks to throw, dump pass, has it to Calhoun, and he's shoved out of bounds, shut up a first down, across the way at the Colorado sideline at the 31-yard line by Fabian Washington. Josh Davis deep for Nebraska at the Husker 25. No score at 11-31, first quarter. Nebraska's second possession coming, barring a mistake. And a very nice punt, a spiraling zoomer over the head of Davis, bounds at the 10, bounds at the five, and trickles into the end zone for a touchback. A huge punt, 69 for Torp, moving left to right, or from north to south here in the first quarter of a scoreless ball game in Boulder. And off the option pass play, looking to throw his Lord, heat on, dumps the pass complete, has the floor across the 35, and he's crunched at the 40, maybe the 41 yard line, and Jamal Lord took a heck of a pop, a lot of pressure on the kid by Sean Tufts, the linebacker, and James Garee, the left end, who came hard. But Jamal stood in there with a purple heart, delivered a strike to the floor. The Omaha Central Golden Eagle for his 18th reception of the year. Jim, good to see the Huskers take advantage of Colorado pursuit that time and their quickness. It looked like option, smelled like option, but it was really option pass, and Jamal Lord executed it to perfection as Mark LaFleur split wide to the left. Came all the way across the field. He was wide open underneath, completed the pass. Up to the 40-yard line, 41-yard line, 21-yard pass play. Nebraska clicks on it. First and 10. Huskers in their own territory. Again, flow on an emotion of the handoff to Corey Ross. Broke a tackle and then was gang tackled. He slipped the hand at the 40, then got up to the 42, maybe the 43. It is second down and nine from the 42 in a stretch play. No effect to Ross. Again, throwing his Lord. Deep ball. Harry and wide open. Has it at the 20. Eight to the 15. 10, 5, touchdown! 
Adrian Fiala, I mean to tell you, he was so wide open, he must have bad deodorant. He was seven yards past the defensive back. Same deal as a week ago, my friend. This time, the ball is on the dollar, and it's six love visitors. Jim, I talked about cashing opportunities, and the Huskers did just that on that last play. It was play action, bootleg to the left side here. Colorado bid on that big time, and Matt Herring able to sneak behind everybody. The big guy's got great speed for being a big guy. All alone, the ball right on the money. It's six for the Huskers, and here comes seven. Dykes point after. He's 26 of 26 before the boot, now 27 of 27. And the Huskers are out in front, seven goose, a 58-yard strike. Matt Herring catches his 21st, the Mackey Award semifinalist, his third touchdown of the year. Cook for the second time to boot it away. Moore and Bloom deep in the old gold black of CU and a good heavy kick to it. Bloom eight yards deep in the end zone. Wise dances out of there for a touchback and it's first and 10 for CU. The Buffaloes have yet to get a first down. We've played not quite five minutes of quarter one. We're in between the hashes at the 20 yard line with DJ Hackett and oh, conference candidate indeed in motion. Back to pass, Clapp has some time, steps up, dump pass underneath, has Calhoun, breaks a tackle, 25. He's to the 30, across the 30, up to the 31, 32, maybe the 33 yard line, Calhoun out of the backfield. Receivers uh, take the uh, defensive backs downfield and then Calhoun sneaks out of the backfield. He's wide open, picks up the first down. He is respectable. That's his 27th reception of the year, so he's respectable out of the backfield. Catch and tosses from Clatt, and a pitch sweep to Calhoun. Runs to the right, 30, gets the block, 35. Got a lot of speed, and is dragged down after an excellent game by Barrett Rood up near the 38, perhaps the 39-yard line. Barrett Rood, the Big 12 Conference's leading tackler, tracked him down, but a sprint play to that corner, and there was plenty of execution for CU, and it got the Buffaloes six yards. It'll be second down, about three and a half. 9.29 to play. We're in this the first quarter. Nebraska on a 58-yard bomb. It was Lord DeHarian. Point after good, you're up to date. McCoy wide right. Hackett wide left. Donahoe in a slot to the left. Lone setback Calhoun gets the handoff. Runs to the right. Wants the first down. Gets to the 40 and then squirts across the 40. Will land short of a first down on third down, three and a half. He needs to get to just about the 43-yard line. Third down, very short for CU. Right side hash mark, 42-yard line. Big fullback Lawrence Vickers in there to block, perhaps, for the eye back. And the eye back is the freshman Daniel Jolly, and he follows blocking over the right side and pushes the pile for a first down up to the 45, maybe the 46. Quarterback clap. Looking for Big 12 Newcomer of the Year honors. Pulls away from center. Quick fire pass, complete for Hackett. Good gain across midfield. Frustrated is TJ Hollowell. Again, Bloom out there in a slot. And Hackett to his right. And a quick fire pass to Bloom. A little bit behind him. Catches 50, 45. Got a great block. First down, 40. And is shoved out of bounds at the Nebraska 38-yard line. 7-24, first quarter, 7-0 Nebraska, Colorado on the move. This drive began at the 20-yard line. Hand off on a draw play to Calhoun. Big hole, dips outside, 35, and is wrestled down inside the 35, near the 33. Second down and five for the Nebraska, 33. Calhoun in motion out of the backfield. Vickers, the lone setback. From the left hash mark, clap, two-step drop, fires the pass, complete. Hackett has it behind the Nebraska defense, and he'll take it to the house for the touchdown. Platt's 19th touchdown toss of the year. Hackett's sixth TD reception, a 33-yarder, and CU is one point away from tying this. Talked about running the seams right now. Hackett did that, the ball thrown up, and went right by Pat Ricketts at the left corner. Pat not, uh, not able to get any help to the inside, right between the defenders, and it was pretty routine, quite frankly, in terms of the play. DJ Hackett is six foot three, up in the air. Complete for a touchdown. Point after for Mason Crosby, freshman from Georgetown, Texas. It is on its way, and it is good. 6.38 in the quarter, 7-7 ball game. And here is Crosby's ensuing kickoff. Into a slight breeze with Josh Davis from just up the road in Loveland, Colorado. He watches it sail through the end zone. Good strong leg by Mason Crosby. Get back to DJ Hackett. He has a 41-inch vertical lead. So you're going to need a little bit of help with him. He's 6'3 with a 41 vertical. He can get up in the air a long ways. Pat Rick Ricketts just five. Joe Daly, is, Adrian, is, is the up. quarterback, and Jamal Lord is now a wide receiver. Beg your pardon, but Daly, the true freshman from Jersey City, is now going to take the snap because Lord, on the play, looks to fake on the handoff as they pitch it to an eye back, and Nebraska gets the ball across the 20 up to the 21-22 yard line. Now, Corey Ross carried the mail, but look at that as James Gree made the tackle. Joe Daly with the play now comes off the 
field, and Lord will be back at quarterback, but that's something for the CU staff to look at. You bet. It gives uh, Colorado's defense another thought in terms of how they're going to align and checking personnel. Gives them one more thing to account for in terms of how they're going to run their defense. Lord lined up as a wide receiver. He came around on a fake formation run in motion when the ball was snapped. It is first, or rather second down and eight now as Lord in the pocket looks to throw. Deep ball over the coverage. Wants Nebraska's Dusty Kaiser, the tight end, but he had man coverage with Sean Tufts at the 45-yard line. The ball was not near completed, and it's third down at about eight. The Oscars have two wideouts to the quarterback's right. Out of the shotgun, Lord has it. He looks to throw on third and eight. Pocket collapses, fires the pass. Pilkington has it at the 30. He's drilled down, but very near, if not a first down. And a penalty marker just flew in the air after the action. Phil Jackson, the senior quarterback, made the snare on Ross Pilkington, who just gathered in the bullet pass, his 18th reception. And we'll see. The ball was advanced to the 30 for the first down. This may be personal foul on Nebraska. Should still be a first down for it. Came after. It came after the play had been completed. But as we forecast, the play came after the completion. So it's first and now 10 for Nebraska, but the line of scrimmage is the Husker 15. So good news, bad news scenario. Big Red keeps the football. 542 and rolling in the first quarter, 7-7 ball game. But they lost 15 yards of field position. Lord changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Flanked by receivers in a lone setback. He turns and hands it off to Corey Ross. Got a block at the 15. He's up to the 20, up to the 21, 22. Good run by Porkchop as he shaked and baked. Finally was wrestled down by Tufts, the linebacker man. Second down, the better part of four. Same formation, a lone setback. And again, Lord is changing the play of the line of scrimmage. Now hands under center, Sewell. On the stretch play, gives it to Corey Ross. Ross is spilled at the 27 but rolls, or rather the 23, but rolls up near the 25. Six down lineman for CU, safety's inching toward the line of scrimmage, and they hand it off to the fullback, and big Steve Crewald muscles his frame from North Loop, Scotia, ahead for three and a first down. Crewald and Ross in the eye behind Lord. First and 10, Huskers at their own 33, just to the left of the right side hash mark, and off the fake, Lord has a harass, throws the ball down the field for Herring once more. He is pushed, there is no flag at the 40 yard line. My goodness. And it's incomplete as the ball flutters past his hands at the 30. Two tight ends for the big red, Harry and right, and Kaiser left. Quarterback Lord on second and long. Fakes in the pocket, wants to run. Will, he's to the 30. He dances outside, has the 35, has the 40, and a first down as he's belted out of bounds. 339 in the first quarter, 7-7 seven, seven ball game. Long passes for each side. First to 10, Huskers 41. Quick pitch for Ross, gets the block. He's to the 35, 40, has the corner. He's to the 50, 45, 40 of Colorado, and dragged down inside the 40 at the 37-yard line. Corey Ross just turned on the Jets, and boy, little pork chop can move those legs when he wants to. <laughs> that matches his number, a 22-yard gallop, and that time, tremendous speed. Once more, the corner had an angle. Phil Jackson even shed a block, but Ross turned on the burners. Yeah, it was Pilkington that got the block on Jackson, and that's what made the play work. If he doesn't get that block, I'm sure uh, uh, Jackson's going to come up. He has tremendous speed also, but Ross Pilkington made sure that that did not happen and gave Corey the opportunity to head up field. Kaiser again tied in, but this time he's in an offset position. And Josh Davis lines up wide to the left. Out of the shotgun is Lord. It's first and 10 from the Colorado 36 and a half and a quick snap to Lord. Breaks a tackle, 35. And then is shoved out of bounds at the 33. Crewald and Davis set behind Lord. Second down and six and the handoff to Josh Davis up the middle, gets to the 30. Cracks it inside the 30 and down to the 29, maybe the 28. Just to the right of the left side, hash mark. Lord hands it off. Davis again. Davis takes on Gabe Neinheis. And the middle of the Colorado defense as he knifes toward the first down. It all depends on where they spot it. I believe he's short by about a foot and a half, maybe a little more. However, our referee, John Laurie, will ask for time and eyeball the deal himself. From just about this position 15 minutes ago, Nebraska went for a fourth down and short and came up empty. It was at the 28. Wow, this is the 27. It is about a foot and a half short. Fourth down up comes for the Big Red. The nose of the football is between the 27 and 28 yard line. Nebraska needs to get it to about the 26 and a half for the first down. Will the Big Red go for it again? The answer is yes. Frank Solich's ball club has struggled offensively. And it has the grit and determination in this one. 
19 on the play clock, 18-17. They break huddle now. The line of scrimmage, they come with two tight ends and a regular eye as Lord turns, fumbles the snap, jumps back on top of it. Doesn't matter if you got it back. It's fourth down, and they didn't get it. The, way the Big Red turns it over. First turnover of the ball game. Actually not. Nebraska got it back, and a pitch to Calhoun. Running left, cuts it back, and is tackled after a very short gain, if at all, by Barrett Rood. And the linebackers are inching toward the line of scrimmage. Only one wide receiver on this set. Quarterback Clatt hands it off to Calhoun again. Picks his way, gets to the 29. And that is where the door got very red in a very big hurry. And Bingham and Trevor Johnson stand in the way. A yard, perhaps. McCoy wide right, Donahoe slot to the right, and then Calhoun out of the huddle, wide to the quarterback's right, near the sideline, covered by Nebraska's Fabian Washington. Double wise to the left, too. Clap back to pass. Rush on, dump pass over the middle. Complete to McCoy for a first down. Upfield, 35-40, up to the 42-43, and then he skips down at the 45-yard line into the hands of Daniel Bullock's. Excellent play called on third and long. Receivers everywhere. Didn't have a helmet for helmet count there, Adrian. And well, McCoy, the All-American, was wide open for 16 yards. What happened, Jim, is on the left side over there, there was, the blitz was coming, DeMario was coming, the uh, uh, safety was coming, Bullocks was coming on the play, and they just could not get to Clatt in time. And Clatt read it very perfectly and completed the pass for the first down. Same formation. Three wide outs right, two to the left. These guys can all run. They run excellent routes. Bloom goes in motion. First and 10 for the 45. Clatt a swing pass for Bloom. It's high, and it's nearly intercepted by Fabian Washington at the Buffalo 42. A wing back to the right. He goes in motion. That's regularly the tight end. It's Wallace on second and 10, and they hand it off to Jolly, the deep back. Got good blocking, 45-50, hit Nebraska territory, and he doesn't get done until he clears the 45 of Nebraska inside to the 43 of Nebraska. Daniel Jolly, freshman from San Antonio, Good footwork for a 230-pounder, and he just rammed it down the field for 12 that time. And he picked a space, uh, perhaps, that normally in practice you would not pick a space. The play was designed to go to the left outside the tackle. That was all jammed up. He saw some green uh, to the right. He took it. Bernard Thomas tried to get him on backside pursuit. He missed a tackle in the backfield. That created the third down play. Poor spot for Colorado. They spot him down short of the 45 at the 46. Very poor spot. CU not very lucky there. Gary Barnett's barking about it, but the first quarter has come to an end. 7-7 ball club. You're listening to Big Red 7-7 ball game. You're listening to Big Red football. We have a, a tied up ball game here, and we have ourselves a pretty good ball game going on. 7-7 seven and seven as we open quarter two at Folsom Field on a sun-soaked day after Thanksgiving, 2003. 7-7 seven seven ball game as Clatt gets the snap and burrows ahead himself, much like what the Huskers had hoped Jamal Lord could have done three minutes ago. And he should get the first down. He needed just a foot or so, and he gets it inside the 45 to the 44-yard line. But the development of Clatt has been a tremendous plus for Gary Barnett because he's got such a complement of pass catchers. First and 10 inside the Nebraska 45, and a quick toss to Calhoun is batted down at the line of scrimmage, I think, by Bernard Thomas. In motion goes Bloom, and they hand it off to Bloom. The speed merchant gets to the 45. Nebraska strings it out, and Bloom gets yanked down after a short gain inside the 42 near the 40-yard line. Third down and six from the 41. Buffaloes in Husker territory. Donahoe in motion. No backs. Clatt retreats. No rush. Plenty of time. Dump pass. Has it good for a first down to the tight end. Jesse Wallace inside the 35. And he is rolled down at the 31. First and 10 as they get close to Nebraska territory near the red zone. The pass play from Clatt to Hackett covered 33. And on a stretch play to Jolly. Jolly gets through the Nebraska tacklers, but then the Huskers fight through the blockers at the 30 and drag them down at the 27. Hollowell and Rude together. That was pretty well executed by Colorado, Adrian. They had plenty of folks out there to block for him. And Nebraska had to fight through those guys, almost sticking their arms through the blockers' arms to get a piece of the running back. And a pickup on the play of about four at second and six. Jim, that's typical Nebraska, Colorado ball right there. You have a lot of guys going after a lot of guys and just slamming and banging and hitting and trying to make plays. And Bear Root able to, to get him by the neck and bring him down. Second down, six and a half ball to the 27. Lone setback, Vickers the fullback. Quarterback Clatt fakes to him, looks to throw, fires the pass. It's past the hands of McCoy, a big part in Hackett. At the 15-yard line, Pat Ricketts was coming hard to rush the passer. Calhoun out of the backfield, goes in motion. Clatt, long count, retreats, has a rush, eludes the rush, looks to throw. Carriker's after him, throws the pass. It's incomplete. Colorado bench screaming about some kind of perhaps encroachment penalty on the Nebraska defensive line. And then Carriker 
through Clatt out of bounds, which causes a chorus of boos from the fans behind the Colorado Buffaloes on the east sideline. But it is an incomplete pass and fourth down for CU. On, I believe, to attempt a field goal will be the young kicker, Mason Crosby. He is six of eight along the 41. They will spot this at the 34, 10 in the end zone. So a 44 yard attempt. But first, Nebraska burns a timeout at the 44, angle to the right toward the south end zone. Placement is down, the kick is up, plenty of boot. It's on its way, and it is good. And that had plenty left. 44 yard field goal for Mason Crosby to break the 7 7 tie. And here's the ensuing kickoff, and this thing's got juice. It's going to bound in front of Davis. He has it off the carom at the one. Upfield, 5 10. He's to the 15. He gets to the 20. He's to the 30. He's outside of the 35. He's to the 40. He's to midfield. He's to the 40 of Colorado and is dragged down by the kicker with a flag down in Colorado territory near the 39 yard line. Tim Liley might be nailed for an illegal block. But Josh Davis, the Big 12 Conference's all-time career kickoff return leader, just jolted the Colorado special teams for 64 yards. Personal foul, face mask, 15 yards, first down. I beg your pardon. The reason I thought it might have been on Liley is because the flag was thrown as he was blocking a buffalo in the back, but the referee was looking at a face mask penalty against the tackler and this tax on 15 more and it gives the huskers unbelievable field position in the red zone at the 20 yard line of colorado jim a couple of years ago josh davis ran one back 74 yards against colorado back in 2001 he uh he bolsters out with this here it gives his team great position to go as we talked about cash and opportunity pitch play corey ross cuts it at the 20 to the outside to the 15 to the 10 and he shoved out of bounds at the 10 yard line by medford moore their veteran free safety man the senior from los angeles a pickup of 11 as they spot him between the nine and the 10 and boy, Corey Ross has been such a spark for this running game, Adrian. I sure wish he could have run it a little more in the second half against K-State. And he had room over there. Matt Herrian is known for his pass catching ability, but that time he had a great block at the line of scrimmage, along with Richie Incognito. They just turned the tackle in the end in, and Corey was able to go. Seven rushes, 50 yards for Porkchop here in the first half of the ball game. 10-7 Colorado Huskers, though, at the buff nine. Handed off to Davey, zigzags. He's to the six, to the five, and is dumped inside the five near the four. A two tight ends, Pete's on the right, Herrian on the left. Option play for Lord to the right, looks to cut. Looks the five, to the four, to the two, to the one. He stretches it across the goal line. Touchdown, Jamal Horn. The ball came loose. It was picked up by Moore, but the officials throw the arms in the air, and Jamal Lord scores the touchdown. It's his 10th rusher of the year, and the Huskers reclaim the lead at 13 to 10 with a PAT pending. He just followed a wave of humanity, Adrian, and oh, got it across the goal line, blocking by Billy Waldrop and Davies. Davies, again, a great block, and Billy Waldrop a great block, and then Jamal Lord, Jimmy just extended to get the football across the goal line, and that counted for the touchdown. Here comes the kick. Attempt for Dykes, placement down, kick is up. It sails through the uprights. It is good. 12-10 in the half. The lead changes back our way. It's 14-10. As Cook, the Seward Blue Jay, jogs toward the football, head down, and he gives it a whack in the air, sends Bloom deep into the end zone. He watched it sail over his head. It's another touchback. Neither team has turned the ball over, knock on wood. First and 10 for the Buffaloes, left to right here in the second quarter. Squared up between the hashes at their own 20-yard line. Clatt pulls away, hands it off to Calhoun, cuts it back, counter play, 20 up to the 25. And he stretches the body across the 25. Good game, man, I gotta tell you, Adrian, every time Colorado runs one of those things, I have a nightmare personified, because that's what Mr. Brown just ran roughshod on us a couple of years ago as Daniel Bullocks makes the tackle, but we have the dickens of a time trying to stop that counter play. That counter play, Jim, and the other one was the counter play where they'd uh, come all the way from the left side and handle it in that fashion. This is a little easier to defend, but uh, Brian Daniels, their right guard, uh, makes it pretty tough. He's a great blocker. He got nine. It's second down and one. About anything for Clapp to do here. Look for him to go deep, perhaps. He takes and fakes and rolls out. Lots of time to run or throw. Fires the pass. Incomplete as Fabian Washington lays out. Joe Kloffenstein, the tight end at the 39-yard line. You heard the pop all the way to the top of Pike's Peak. It's an incomplete pass, and it's third down and one. But Fabian Washington just gave Mr. Kloffenstein a Florida hello. 
That may be one of the toughest hits I've seen all year as yeah. Fabian Washington levels it on uh, Klopfenstein. Klopfenstein 6'5 at 240. Fabian, the, not nearly that big, but man, he gave it up and took, uh, took the hit right into his basket. He had the principle of physics against him that time, did Mr. Klopfenstein. Sure, maybe Fabian's only 175, but when he has the angle and the three-step start, kaboom. Jim, when you have surprise on the receiver, that, uh, <laughs> that makes up for just about everything yeah. else. Third down and one. Colorado buffs down 14 to 10, 11-24 in the half from their own 29-yard line. In motion goes Wallace, and they hand it off to Vickers, Don't the fullback, it. and he's not going to get it. This time Nebraska's ready for him, and they push him back at the 28-yard line. It was TJ and Bingham and Big Patrick Cabongo who told me in the airport yesterday, Adrian, we absolutely have to win this game. Brandon Teamer, the was... promising freshman from Omaha Central, was at the bottom of the stack yeah. too, but the Huskers forced their second three and out of this first half of the ball game. Those two guys really responsible for that. They just jammed it up. There was nowhere to go for the fullback on the play, and then the linebackers, Rude, finished it up along with DeMario. That's just tremendous effort, tremendous effort by the Blackshirt defensive line. Torp for his third punt. Last time we spoke of him, he uncorked a 69-yarder. Davis deep at his 23. Good snap to Torp. Head down, gives it a boot. End over end. Now a spinning wobbler as it takes flight. And Davis at the 25, upfield 30. He spins out of a tackle at the 35 and is up to the 37, 38 yard line. Now he changes the play at the line of scrimmage. Plenty of time. 13 to snap it. Hands under center. Sewell hands it off to Corey Ross. He stutter steps and then advances the ball from the 37 up to perhaps the 39. Second down and eight from the 39. Lord off play action. Rolls to the right. Buys some time, cocks the arm, throws the pass, complete to Flew Ellen. He has it across midfield and dances out of bounds at the Colorado 45 yard line. Now, normally, Isaiah Flew Ellen is the deep threat. That time, he went intermediate. Adrian turned, the ball was delivered by Lord for 16 yards. Bootleg action, a great fake by Jamal. That put everybody going to the left side. Uh, Mike Erickson peeled out of there. He actually made a great block to preserve the play, and then Jamal delivered that pass down that far sideline to Flewellen, who had taken his defensive back down the field and then came back on the route, turned it back in the route, and completed the uh, DB fell down, but again, he had help make an attack. Lord, four of six for 113 yards in the first half, 944 to go in, and Huskers 14 to 10. Fake on the counter play to Ross. Lord keeps it, angles off the left side and advances the ball from the 45 down to near the Colorado 40. Maybe the 39 into a herd of Buffaloes. LaFleur out of the huddle wide to the right. Flewellen wide to the left. Harrion tight to the left. Pete's tight to the right. Lone setback Ross. Five down lineman for CU. Linebackers inching off the line of scrimmage as Lord pitches to Ross. Good play. 40. Has the first down. Stutter step 30 and then turns back in and on Tufts and gets it a bigger pardon for the 40 to the 35 yard line. Looking for the 30. Boy, if he doesn't cut back, Adrian, he gets at least five more. Instead, he decided to outthink the defense. And by that time, Sean Tufts was in the doorway. But he still got the first down inside the 35 near the 34. Got a good block. The line of scrimmage from Richie Incognito went behind that and headed upfield. He was trying to get down into his friend's territory down there to get another block or two. But thought maybe I could take it inside and get more yardage. That didn't happen. But he got the first down, and that's all that matters. 8.50 in the half, 14.10, as Joe Daly once more is on the field, this time as a receiver. And Lord gets the direct snap. He to the 35, wants the corner, gets to the 32, and is hit well on a wonderful open field tackle by the cornerman, Sammy Joseph. Double wise to the right, Lord fakes to Ross, bootleg, sets up time, deep ball for Harry, and the ball is in the end zone and blocked and batted down beautifully, I believe, by Moore out of the shotgun. Into block is Ross for Lord, who gets the snap, looks downfield, sets up, guns the pass. It's beyond the reception hands of Mark LaFleur inside the 30 at the 28. Even if he makes the catch, there's a good chance Phil Jackson gets him short of the first down. So fourth down up comes. And this would be a longish field goal attempt for David Dykes as the Huskers nurse this four-point lead of 14 to 10. Lots of pressure that time by Colorado. They crossed the backers into blitzing mode. They brought up uh, number 82, their defensive end, James Gary, to the inside. And those guys really put a lot of pressure on Jamal Lord to throw the ball, and he threw it a bit quicker than he really wanted to and overthrew uh, the receiver on the play as Dykes comes onto the field. Kellen Houston will spot it at the 39, 10 in the end zone, 49-yard attempt. Four seconds, three seconds, two seconds, one second. The placement is down. Houston's going to run it. He's to the 35. He's to the 30. He wants the first down. He's got it, 25-20, and is counted out of bounds inside the 20 at the 16-yard line. 
17-yard play as Frank Solich turns the playbook upside down and Nebraska runs a fake field goal and the Ankeny, Iowa product who has had quite a colorful year, gets the first down for Nebraska inside the Buffalo Red Zone. And Kellen Houston has been known for his linebacking ability and mostly for his holding ability, but now he gets into the deception category and he runs for the first down, a big, big, huge first down for Nebraska. The 5'11", 200-pound walk-on linebacker just put him up right there. First and 10, Buffalo 16 and a half, right side hash mark toward the north end zone. Ross gets the pitch play and a block from Billy Waldrop meets the 15, meets the 14, and stays in bounds as he goes down beneath the herd of hooves. Pilkington wide left, wide, Liley wide right. He goes in motion, regular eye Davies and then Ross on second down and six option play, pitch play Ross. Davies looks to block, Ross gets tripped up, keeps his footing inside the 12 and crawls along the turf near the 11 yard line. He was but an eyelash as Dusty Kaiser blocking over there had an opportunity with one more piece of the defender to spring Corey Ross. He got a couple of yards down near the 11, third down up comes. Motion took the corner out of the picture over there. Motion by the Huskers took the corner out and again created a lane over there for the Huskers to go into. But Corey in the balance drill, just not able to keep the balance, but he gets it upfield, third about four. Third down at about four, just outside the Buffalo 10 yard line is Lord off the option, looks to throw, looks to pitch, fakes the pitch, keeps his foot, he to the 10 to the five and fights his way inside the five at the three yard line. Boy, Jamal Lord is running man. like a man possessed here in the first half of the ball game. J.J. Billingsley was waiting for somebody else to get the tackle. Next thing you know, it was his problem and the rangy KG Lord almost stuck it in the end zone for the second time. It's first and goal for Nebraska at the buff three. Jim had a good close down block by Dan Waller. He came in front of Brandon and Co. Brandon Co. stepped around that. He led the play to the outside. Judd Davies joined him. They got two great blocks out there on the edge, and then Jamal Lord took it across for the first. First and goal to the three yard line. Goal line defense for the Buffs and the black uniforms, gold helmets. Freewall goes in motion, handed off to the deep back. Ross gets a block to the two to the one. He bounces head of the end zone. Touchdown! Oh, the Nebraska offense looks dynamite here in the first half of the ball game, and the Huskers extend the lead now to 20 to 10 as Corey Ross scores the TD from three yards out. And after the fake field goal, Nebraska cashes that in for six. Here's Dykes for the conventional maneuver, a 12-play drive, 63 yards, burn 428 of period two. The placement is down. The kick from Dykes, the freshman from Spring, Texas, is perfect. Timeout on the field, 6-0-1 on the half, 21-10, good guys. Sam Cook for the ensuing kickoff, his fourth one of the first half, and this one's got plenty of altitude. As Jeremy Bloom sees it clear the playing surface, another touchback, and it's first and 10 for the Buffaloes. First and 10 for the 20-yard line as Clatt hands it off to the deep back. That's Brian Calhoun, the sophomore scat back from the 20 up to the 22, and that's it. Barrett Rood makes the tackle. Flat under, pulls away, short drop, fire pass, complete to Hackett. Takes a pop at the 30, and Barrett Rood gets it to the 31. It's a first down for the Buffs on a nine-yard dart pass from Platt to DJ Hackett. That's the kind of smoke he's going to get in the NFL, so we might as well get used to it. Good tackle by Rood, but a good play by Colorado and a first and 10 for the Buffs. Hackett again, a little bit of an advantage there against Fabian Washington on that play, and Barrett Rood knew that play was coming. He just tried to get over there a lot quicker and could not get there uh, in a quick enough time, and they completed for a first down. Stretches it to the 32, first and 10 for the old Golden Black, and a stretch play for Calhoun. Make it jolly, but Nebraska's Bernard Thomas is ready for him, and Jaws throws him down. Jolly had a whole snoot full of East Palo Alto, California that time, and it's a tackle for loss for Jaws inside the 30, and they'll spot him backward progress at the 27, make it the 28. Good job by Bernard Thomas to get over there. Uh, Derek Stembrick, their right guard, he had the angle on him, tried to block him. He went right through the block and made the play, and made the play for a loss. Great job, Bernard Thomas. It means second down and 14. They need to get to the 42 for the first. Clatt checks over the defense, empties his backfield, which means we have four wide receivers. Bloom is one of them. He's in motion. Uh, Mario Williams may have been in the uh, neutral zone as the play is made to Calhoun, and Calhoun advances it from the 28 up to near the 34, where Thomas once more makes the tackle. But DeMario, anticipating the play, may have been in the neutral zone. That's the flag on the big red. It will probably be declined because the gain wasn't bad unless they want to take the five yards and redo second down closer. 
Instead of third down at about eight, it'll be second down near 10. Offside, defense, five yards, yep. three plays, second down. That's what they'll do. Second down, nine and a half. Put the football at about the 33 as Platt marks the count, gets the snap, short drop, fires the pass for Calhoun, and he is drilled after a sh short gain on the play by Larnell McPherson. Right at the 34. Third down and eight now. Again, they spread the offense all over the field. Five wideouts, three to the right, two to the left, and out of the shotgun. Platt back to pass. Pressure on, fires the pass. It is incomplete through the hands of Donahoe. Coverage by Jarrell Pippins, the safety man. Would have been a first down at the 45 and a half. There was contact, no flag, and the black shirts hold again. Torp for his fourth punt. And again, we've not seen the Funk Farmer all day. And you know what? The All-American couldn't be happier about that. At the 19, high snap to Torp, flags it down, and then gives it a ride. Davis chases it toward the sideline. It bounces. He eludes it, which was a bit of a mistake. 20, rolling inside the 15, the 10, and will be killed at the six-yard line. You know, that's a decision you've got to make in an instant, Adrian. And most of the time, you can complain about a punt receiver not fielding a punt, but not that time. Under three minutes in the half, Big Red 21-10, handed off to Josh Davis, breaking attack and across the 10, across the 12, up to the 14-yard line. That's more like the Josh Davis, the tough junior that we saw in the Penn State game. Defensively for CU, the tackle was made by Gabe Nine Heist, the right end, the senior from the Chicago area. And Jim, what a lick did Jake Anderson put on their defensive tackle. Anderson, a little in Colorado uh, product, uh, uh, graduated, came to Nebraska, but man, he took the DT and ran him right out of town. Tight formation, double tights for the big red, regular eye, second down after the gain of eight and two. Davis, another handoff, gets the first down. He scampers across the 15 and knifes into the Buffalo herd, across the 20, up to near the 21. Without an eye back, Crewall, the lone setback, two tight ends, and the single man, Flewellen, wide to the left. Off play action, Lord sets up another deep ball. Flewellen runs underneath it, and he's just short of it at the 40-yard line. You know, Adrian, it appeared as though Isaiah held up an ounce at midfield. The ball was thrown in exactly the right spot, and Flewellen, with closing speed, had a shot at it. But it seemed when he came near the football that he was just a step or two late. Jim, you look at the shadows. Look at the goalpost shadows. They're going straight up the field. Yep. I think the sun is directly behind those goalposts, and I think he may have lost the football in the sun. It looked to me like a guy who really had lost his way in terms of be. finding the football because it appeared he was going to be there. David Horn is now on the field to play shotgun man for Lord. Runs the option to the right side, keeps it, gets to the 20, and angles off the 20 and lowers his shoulder and gets it from the 20 up to the 22. Sending Pilkington in motion is Lord, who barks it, gets the count, has the pitch for Horn, and he is tackled behind the line of scrimmage on a fabulous play by James Gray, the defensive end. Kyle Larson, 56 punts, a 45-yard average, a long of 80. He has 19 inside the opponent's 20-yard line. This is number one in the conference and perhaps to America. He stands at his four, snap back to him, it's high, head down. Larson's punt is blocked. He covers it at the eight-yard line, first and 10, Colorado. Yeah, double pressure from the right side over there. You've got to pick the inside guy out and take him, but that didn't happen. I believe it was Wallace. Wallace, the guy who gets most of the credit, but yeah, there was double pressure coming on Larson, his first block of the year, and this has put a different complexion on the football game. Give Colorado credit, they have loaded up their special teams with some of their very best players and certainly their best athletes. Actually, I think it was Barry Kunkel who might have blocked it. Backup wide receiver on special teams. We'll sort it out for you. But anyway, Colorado with an amazing opportunity. It is first and 10, make it goal from the Nebraska. Oh, about eight, seven and a half, eight, handed off to Jolly. Jolly is covered up on the play nicely. Nebraska buries him after a very short game. Lone setback, Jolly. Donahoe wide to the right, two tight ends and one wide to the left. The split receiver for Clatt looks that way. Left the whole way, fires the pass into the end zone, incomplete. It was low and to the outside as the intended target, McCoy, on the F that spells out Buffaloes in the left end zone. Had the pass been a foot and a half to the left, it's a touchdown for CU. As it is, third down and goal, 54 seconds remain and a very big play for the Black Shirts. In trouble, the Black Shirts here as Bloom goes in motion and Clapp pulls away. Time initially sets up, fires the pass, complete touchdown. Right in the near corner in front of the pylon, 
It's D.J. Hackett for his second touchdown or reception of the afternoon. And the Buffaloes turn the special teams jam into six points. 21-16 with a point after coming, and you just can't cover five wide receivers in this scheme very easily. He ran Bloom uh, from right to left on the play, uh, kind of took the uh, defensive attention to the left side. Hackett one-on-one uh, -on -one with Fabian, and they were running that play in pregame a lot. They were practicing that play uh, a great deal in pregame, and they run it to perfection right there and uh, get the six, get the touchdown. Colorado will attempt a two-point conversion with 49 seconds remaining. Clatt with three wideouts right, and Nebraska can't call a timeout. They want one. They ain't got one. Fabian Washington wants a timeout. They don't have one, and Clatt pulls away. Looks to the right. Wants to throw. Dump pass. It is broken up and nearly received. Gary, check out on Josh Davis. It appears he may be injured. He was talking to Brian Bailey, the strength and conditioning guy, a minute or two ago, and he's not deep to receive this kick by Crosby. It is sent through the end zone near the embankment beyond the goalpost to our right. Corey Ross gives it a look. It's a touchback and first and 10 for the Huskers at the 20-yard line. It appears Nebraska will burn the 49 seconds as they put a deep safety man on the field to guard against a mistake. Lord gets the snap, takes a knee. You know, nobody from Colorado was moving on the play, and Lord uh, uh, smartly dropped back. He stepped back about two or three paces. Didn't go to a knee initially. Mm -hmm. and he's waiting for what those guys were going to do. And maybe, hey, if they uh, if they just don't commit, yep. he takes off and goes. But uh, one of their players from the left side came over, and he went down to a knee as the clock continues to run here. Deep safety man is Ross Pilkington, the best athlete among the best athletes on the team. So if there is a mistake, a la Joe Pisarczyk and Herman Edwards, Nebraska doesn't give up the touchdown. Lord gets the snap again, takes it, and that'll burn the half. Well, it was awfully fun for a long time, and it still is a lot more fun than the opposite. 21 to 16, that's the number. The Huskers have the lead. Jamal Lord, a couple of touchdowns, a long pass to Matt Harrion, quality defense, and then one special teams mistake was oh so expensive. Colorado being behind is no big deal. They've been behind all year. In fact, they have led for only 90 minutes of the entire season. So coming from behind is no big deal for the Golden Buffaloes, especially at home. So we'll see how they do as Crosby kicks off the football to begin half number two, and he sends it through the end zone for an automatic touchback. As Lord changes the play of the line of scrimmage, 20-yard line, hand off on a draw play to Ross, and Ross is tackled behind the line of scrimmage. It is a gain of nothing, second and 10 for Nebraska. The Huskers lead it 21 to 16, opening moments of half number two. Lord again changes the play of the line of scrimmage. He sends LaFleur wide to the right, Pilkington wide to the left. He's faking to Crewall to make it Davies, throwing the ball down the field. It's lofted for LaFleur, and it's beyond his grasp by five yards on the near sideline at the Colorado 42. Lord under, gets the snap, retreats, looks to throw, lets it fly. Pass is incomplete for Pilkington at the 30-yard line. Larson's first punt attempt was blocked. And I think the Huskers were moving along the offensive front, which will cost them five more. With 14.05 in the third quarter, 21-16, Colorado's going to get the football. As Larson once more waits, here comes the snap, here comes the pressure. They almost get it again. He hits a high one in the air. And Bloom camps under it at the 30-yard line, slips a tackle, 35. He's got the 40. He's trying to break another tackle. Lane Kelly gets a hold of his ankle tops, finished off by Houston at the 42-yard line. See you in its own territory. 55-yard punt, 13-yard return, and Vance Washington is a guy Nebraska has to be mindful of. He almost got to the punter that time. He was initially responsible for covering LaFleur. He vacated that, came after the punter, and almost got to Larson for the second block. As it is, excellent field position for Joel Klatt. Klatt in the first half of the ball game, Randy did what? 10 of 20, 113 yards, two touchdowns, Jim. That's right at about his per season average, although over the last four games, he's been throwing it at about 44%, per, 64%. First and 10 for the 42 as they hand it off to Vickers, the fullback. Vickers dances to the outside, but then is spilled by Barrett Rood, who fought through the tackle of Jesse Wallace and made a tremendous play at the line of scrimmage. It'll be second down and 10. Rood is all conference. Second and 10 of the 42, Bloom goes in motion as Clatt with a single setback, has his tight end in a slot, retreats to throw, time, guns, pass complete, shut of a first down as Hackett makes the catch in front of Demario Williams at the 48-yard line. Third down at about four, CU between its own 48 and 49. Led by Marwan Hodge, 
the All-America center from Montreal. Under center, Clatt marks the count, looks at four down lineman, retreats. Pump fake throws, complete, has the first down. Big tight end makes the reception just a couple of yards down the field. Bernard Thomas makes the tackle. Clatt sends Calhoun in motion, first and 10, big red 45. Looks right, passes down the middle. It's complete for Hackett. He got into the Nebraska zone and advances the ball to the 30. Vickers and Jolly set up the eye behind Clatt, first and 10 near the Nebraska red zone, and they hand it off to Jolly, dips to the outside. That's a problem. Barrett Rood's there, and he spins him down with help by Hollowell and Bernard Thomas. Loss in the play outside the 30, up to the 31. So a drop of two means second and 12 at 11.24 to go. Coming into the ballgame, Barrett Rood had a total of 264 tackles in his career, ranked sixth for the Huskers. The Huskers needed 24 to get to second place. That's to Mike Brown. Uh, Mike Brown, uh, again, an outstanding player a few years ago here for Nebraska, but very rude. Before it's done, he will threaten the record held by Jerry Murtaugh, 342. Demario Williams is now lined up on the defensive right end spot next to Bingham, then Lakeven Smith, then Trevor. Second down and 12. Colorado at the Husker 31. Clatt pulls away, gets the snap, looking, looking. Now he's got a rush. He dances out of it, looks to throw, does so down the field for no one. Third down and 12, again from the Nebraska 31. Clatt out of the shotgun, five wide receivers set, no running backs, gets the snap, looks to the left first, now rolls to the right, Lakeven's after him, throwing the football, passes, caught five, touchdown McCoy. Jim, they had two receivers against one corner, nobody moved over. Yep. Daniel Bullock's okay. frustrated, TJ Hollowell back there too, asking about coverage. The truth is, Nebraska just lost the extra guy. And it means Colorado takes a 22 to 21 lead. They had three on the right side, two on the left side, and only two DBs over there to help out in coverage. Fabian Washington needed help to the inside, was not able to get because they were simply outmanned in the coverage. So a Clatt picked up on that pretty quickly and hit the deep seam, the easy seam, and that was almost too easy for Colorado. McCoy catches his 11th touchdown pass of the afternoon, I should say of the year. It's the second touchdown pass of the afternoon for Joel Clatty now has 20. And they're going to go for two again, and Clatt needs to burn another timeout. From the three-yard line, long count, retreats to throw. Somebody open, looks left, looks right, throws the pass into the end zone, and it's intercepted at the goal line. Demario Williams picks it away, and for the second time, the two-point conversion goes awry for the Golden Buffaloes. And that was doubly expensive, Adrian, because they had to burn a timeout to come away empty. Exactly. They have just one timeout remaining, and we have a ton of time left to go in this football game. And usually teams don't lose if you can do that. Here's the ensuing kickoff by Crosby. Another good swat at it. And this thing is driven well down the fairway. And once more for the 20-yard line, Colorado shows five down lineman. Lord turns, hands it off to Ross up the middle. He's to the 20, up to the 25, and pulls. Uh, Buffalo to the 26-27 yard line, and that's Gabe Nineheis. Nebraska empties the backfield on second down and four from the 26 yard line. Low snap to Lord, gets it, covers it. Erickson blocking, 25-30, gets the first down across the 30 up to the 32-33 yard line. As he angled around the right side, Tufts makes the tackle from the 33 yard line. Big Red in its own territory as they run the option play to the left side, and Lord keeps it, and Lord has the 35, and Lord is smothered at the 36. Nebraska breaks huddle at the 27-yard line. Pilkington wide left, Flewellen wide right. Davies alone setback. Two tight ends, Harry and right, and Peets to the left. Flewellen goes in motion. Option play. No, they hand it off to the fullback, and Davies has the 35, the 40. He's got a first down as he tumbles over Buffaloes and gets it out to the 43, maybe the 44-yard line. Judd Davies hid behind the blockers. It looked as though Jamal kept it. It might pitch it to Flewellen, but then the horse from Millard North made it happen. He snuck right in behind Mike Erickson uh, and disappeared, Jim. And that created a problem for the uh, Colorado defense. Their linebackers just lost sight of him, and Davies picked up a big, big first down. Now the lone setback is Corey Ross. Again, two wideouts and two tights. Lord changing the play at the line of scrimmage. 11, 10, 9 to snap it. First and 10, pitch play, Ross. Colorado has this one covered. Ross, though, lowers the boom, clears the 45 on first down and 10 from the 43, and he gets it perhaps out to maybe the 47. So give him two and a half, and it's second down for Lord, who fakes, looks to roll, has a rush, throws the pass incomplete. Kaiser, the tight end at the 47, he was covered well on the play. Colorado 
definitely accounted for receivers as Akarika Don was there, but Lord really no chance to complete the pass. There was way too much pressure provided that time. Lord on third down and eight from the 46 and a half, gets the snap, has some time, lets the ball fly. The pass is complete, it's LaFleur. He is tackled at the 45 yard line of Colorado and out of bounds for a first down. He needed about seven and a half, he got eight and a half, and there's a strike by number five. Lord wants Corey Ross on the right hand wing. There he goes, waits for the snap, gets it, looks to run, does so, gets a block 50, 45 to the outside, and dragged down to the 44 on an excellent play by Clyde Sorrell, the rover man. From the 44 and a half of CU, out of the eye, Davies and then Corey, back to pass as Jamal has a big rush, tufts after him, spins away, 45, 40, and then drags a Buffalo inside the 40 at the 39 yard line, shy of a first down by about four, but Tufts had a chance to make a big play and Jamal Lord did not allow. He spun away from that sure-handed tackler. Finally, it was DeAndre Fluellen, no relation to uh, Isaiah, the senior DeAndre from Houston, Texas. Gets the tackle, but five yards short of the first down, the Big Red is down by one. 22-21 at 6.50 in the third quarter. This drive began at the Big Red 20, and every ounce for this offense is fought for. Again out of the eye, two tights and a single wide out Pilkington. On the fake to Ross, back to pass Lord, dump pass, Ross has it, tackle, lost the football, they'll say incomplete pass. Larson's last punt traveled 55 yards. His first attempt was blocked. High snap, flags it down, and a pooch in the air, and an end over end wobbler. Bloom has the catch, no, he lets it go at the three and caroms into the end zone. So the Huskers get just 20 yards of field position on the exchange as Klatt takes and hands it off to Calhoun. Calhoun has a seam 20-25 and is knifing ahead across the 25 and up to the 27 or 28 yard line where T.J. Hollowell is able to put the stop down on him. Pick up good gain on first down, Adrian got eight, it's second and two. This is a passing situation for Joel Klatt, sophomore from not far away, just Arvada, Colorado in the Denver Metro. Back to pass he goes on second and two, lots of time. Now bumps into a blocker and falls down for a loss on the play at the 25. It is third down and five for the Buffs, 5-11 third quarter, CU 22, Nebraska 21. Huskers take out some linemen, put in some defensive backs. Three wide receivers for Klatt, pulls away from center, sets up at the 18, dances, throws the ball, complete, has Donahoe for a first, 35-40, 45, and is down at the Buffalo 46-yard line. Barrett Rood in coverage, made the play, but Donahoe slipped in. The sophomore from Rancho Santa Fe, California, gets his 16th reception of the year, a 21-yard pitch, catch and run. Jim, that play was borrowed by Kansas State, or from Kansas State, I should say, by Colorado. Kansas State burned Nebraska on the play three times, just like that play right there. And Lornell was caught up, uh, caught up in a zone coverage right there. He could not get far enough to the outside to make the play, and Colorado picks up the first down. Nebraska's struggling to get its aggressiveness back defensively ever since that blocked punt. First and 10, 45 and a half yard line. Buffalo's again a fresh four. Klatt pulls away, no rush, they have to wait. Now he dances, throws it down the field, pass incomplete. Too high for Hackett at the Nebraska 25. McCoy wide left, Bloom in a slot to the right. He's been fairly quiet. Vickers the lone setback, Donahoe wide left. Near side hash mark as the quarterback hands it off to Vickers. Vickers spins away from Teamer at the 50. Might get the first down as he rumbles down the field inside the Nebraska half of this gridiron and gets it to near the 45. The Huskers came with a blitz that time, Adrian. And it was a good call in a rushing situation because Nebraska had spread out a little bit and Vickers, the big fast and burly guy from Houston, was able to now then get some momentum to advance the ball an extra five or six. He did not get the first down, but not by much. He has just a half a yard left as they break huddle and come to the line of scrimmage. Clatt under, looks at the defense, waits, gets the snap, keeps it himself, and drives it forward, has the first down. McCoy is out of the huddle wide to the right. Calhoun, the eye back, tailback is now wide of him. Donahoe in a slot to the right, and then two more wide outs to the quarterback's left. They operate from the 44, and a quick pitch, and on the near sideline, Hackett gets it. He's down at the 40, again on the play of about three, second and seven. He went to the turf after he caught it. From near the 39. Second down and seven, Klatt again gets it, pulls away, gives it off to Daniel Jolly. Nebraska's ready for this, and Demario Williams throws him down back of the line of scrimmage. Near the 41 or 42. So it'll set up another third down and long as they spot the football. Three wideouts right, 
Two left, no setbacks. Third down, seven and a half of the 41 of Nebraska. Back to pass, Klatt. He's being rushed, he's being hit, and Carriker whips him down for a big loss outside the 50 and back and above territory at the 45-yard line. Either get a turnover or get a sack. That time, Nebraska got the sack, the first quarterback sack of this evening slash afternoon, a minus 10 on the play, and Carriker, big Drago from Kennewick, Washington, said the future looks bright for the black shirts. He's 6'6 and 260. He's a redshirt freshman, and that was just his third tackle on the year for Adam Carricker, and the big one it was, a sack of Klatt, and brings up the putt. Husker, the Blackshirts needed a big play like that. They got it. Yeah. Oscars will get it back in pretty good shape. Pretty generous spot for CU. They put it at the 50, fourth down nonetheless, and as the snap comes back to Torp, the officials stop the action, and they ask for a penalty flag. False start, False start against five CU, yards. so Nebraska God knew gets the five yards anyway. Fourth down and 22. Snap back to Torp, no pressure, sends a spiral in the air. It's a dandy punt as Josh Davis signals for the fair catch and makes it inside the 10 at the 6. You line up at the, about the 7-yard line, the 8-yard line. If you take steps back, you let it go. And he took about three steps back to feel the putt. That's why he was looking where he was. He was not sure. Lord turns, hands it off to Ross, up the middle, gets a block from Crewall, cracks it across the 5 and rolls to near the 10. We knew the Huskers were limited a bit offensively. We thought that in any case, this big red could move the ball up the field three and four yards at a time. That needs to happen now. On the option play, handed off to the fullback, Crewald again. He draws a crowd as he advances it and thunders it up to near the 13 of the 14. How generous will the officials be? We say the 14-yard line. So it sets up a third down now. Three and a half as Akarika Don makes the principal tackle on the North Loop Scotia Wildcat. 12 seconds, 10 seconds, 11 seconds, 9 seconds. We will not have another play in the third quarter. Three of the four done at Folsom Field in Boulder. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. It's a good old-fashioned North Division war. Colorado and Nebraska. The Buffaloes by one when we come back for the fourth quarter. You're listening to Big Red Football. Colorado has owned Nebraska in the fourth quarter since the Big 12 began. In fact, they have outscored the Huskers 83 to 22 in the fourth quarter since Big 12 play began in 1996. <laughs> it's third down, two and a half. Nebraska, the Huskers over at their own 14-yard line. We open the fourth quarter, 22-21 Buffaloes, and we got to get this first down. Two tight ends, in motion goes Liley. Lord runs the option, will keep it, he's got a problem. He's tackled behind the line of scrimmage, stretches the body out at the 15-yard line. Colorado takes the ball away from him. The officials discuss whether or not this is a turnover. It is not. Fourth down is once more Nebraska tries an option play against a very athletic defense and comes up with snake eyes. Fourth down and about one and a half from the 15. Snap back to him. It's a good one. Head down. Rush comes. Larson doesn't get the most of this one. And it sails way out of bounds. Very, very short. The officials on the scene will converge, and they say it is out of bounds at the Nebraska 37-yard line. Flat from the 37 and a half, make it the 38. They decide it's the 38, lone setback in motion. Goes the flanker man, slash tight end, back to pass, Clatt holds it, has a rush, the ball pops loose, it's on the turf! I think Colorado got it, or will they say a forward pass that is incomplete? Left to right go the Buffaloes in the fourth quarter. And they turn and hand it off to Calhoun. Gets a block initially. The Huskers break it and then collapse in on him and tackle him after a short gain. Across the 35, down to the 34. Bingham once more, principally the tackle man with a scarlet and cream. A pickup on the play, though, of a solid four yards. And it means third down and six. The Golden Buffaloes at the Husker 34. They're going to go with that five wide receiver set. It's been very effective for them. Nebraska's a helmet short here on the near sideline. Three receivers, just two defensive backs. Third and six, back to pass. Clatt, pressure initially, throwing the pass. Incomplete off of the tight end's hands at the 30-yard line. Once more, Colorado tried to cross. But on this occasion, McCoy, who was tight on the formation, crossed in front of Rude. The pass went past him. Rude applied the lick, and it's fourth down. Big stand for the Black Shirts pending. A delay of game penalty here taken by the Buffaloes. CU sends two wideouts right, and then two to the left, and another flag. This should be an illegal formation. Action offense. Five it yards. is. So another five yards. This continues. Nebraska may get good field position out of this. <laughs> the line of scrimmage is now the Husker 45. It is fourth and 17. Snap back to Torp. No pressure. 
Punches the ball in the air. That's not deep, and this is going to be fine for Nebraska. The ball bounds at the 28 and then kicks for the Huskers the other direction and is tagged at the 40. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a minus two punt for Torp. <laughs> a minus two. Make it check that from the original line of scrimmage. Ten a yards. plus four. Is it a plus four punt? It is yep. a four and a half plus four and a half yard punt. And he he downed his own punt. Yeah, I've yeah. never yeah. seen that before. I don't think I've ever seen that happen before. The, 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 the ball was spinning straight up in the air, came straight down and bit, and then uh, did a moonwalk back to about the 40 yard line. You were right about great field position, Jim. Nick Pavendo will open this series at left tackle. He's on the hip of Matt Harrion. So Richie Incognito gets the break. First and 10, Nebraska Husker 40. That might be the play of the game. Play fake. Lord in the pocket, has a huge rush, eludes it, looks to throw, does badly. Incomplete, blown away from Kaiser at the 49. Pilkington was also in the zone. Akarika Dawn might have affected the throw some. Second down and 10 from the 40. Lord again to throw, sets up, will run. He's to the 40, dips to the outside. His ankle tackled after a short gain up to the 43-yard line. Jamal one of six throwing in the third quarter and into the fourth. 12-20 in it, out of the shotgun on third and long, guns the pass. It is complete to Harry and near a first down, but he might be just a little bit short. Tackle was made by Akarika Dawn. Harry didn't get another stride down the field, and he's going to be shy by about a half a yard. And Nebraska is going to go ahead and do it. Let's see it. Maybe the law of averages is on our side. 0 for 2 on third, fourth downs. Fourth down, less than one. Lord gets the snap. Lord fires forward. Lord might get it on second effort. They stopped the play, wow. and on second effort, he got it as he cleared the 50-yard line. Second, third, fourth, and fifth Oh, effort. my goodness. Just across midfield, 11-24 in the ball game. Colorado 22, Nebraska 21, first and 10, Big Red. And the option pass. Lord time, sets up, throws, pass complete. Pilkington, 35, 30, and he's bumped out of bounds at the 30-yard line of Colorado. Give the kid some time, and he delivers the pass. There's 20 more, and the Big Red is inching toward the buff red zone. Boy, that was bootleg action again. A lot of bootleg action this afternoon that Colorado bites on it. Ross Pilkington lined up wide to the left here. Cut it across with that great speed that he has across all the action. It comes up free right about the, uh, well, make it about the 35-yard line. And Jamal Lord is able to deliver the pass right on the money. And Ross gets outside, almost breaks it free. He's wide to the right now as the Huskers break huddle. Flewellen wide to the left, gets man coverage by Vance Washington. And a pitch to Ross, got a block 30, cuts it back 28. Got two. Nice block on the edge initially by Dan Villy Waldrop. Ross, his running mate. Back to pass, and before he can do anything, we have a flag thrown by the umpire. Second down 13, the Huskers at the buff 33. Four wideouts for the Big Red, one set back out of the shotgun. Lord gets the snap. He retreats, has some pressure, steps up, guns the pass, complete. It's to Liley at the 25, and then he's belted out of bounds inside the 25 of the 24-yard line. Under center on third and four, gets the snap, pitches to Ross, got a block to the outside, 25, 20, he to the 15, the 10, he to the five, he's into the end zone, touchdown! But first he stepped out of bounds at the four or the three. Kari Ross with an amazing burst around right end, and at the point of attack, Adrian, a 26-yard gallop. That kid has a step as quick as we've seen since I'm on green. He is so fast, so quick, and so hard to find at times, Jim, and we had a lot of guys up front that were downfield. Uh, number one of which, let's talk about Josh Sewell from his center position. His center position, he got way over there in terms of the blocking scheme and was able to make the play line with Waldrop and Co. Ross now over 100 yards for the second time in three games. He's at 106, and they hand it off to Ross again. He picks his way to the two to the one. He may be near the one, between the two and the one, on first and goal from the three-yard line. And I got to go back to the 26-yard scamper. Isaiah Flewellen laid a tremendous block on the safety man, which was a big factor inside the 15-yard line. Absolutely, as a, the Huskers do not benefit from a very good spot on that last play as Ross got it down inside the one-yard line, but they're ready to go again. Out of the eye, two tight ends for Lord, looks over the defense, sends Creewald in motion, handed off to Ross, he's to the two, and that's where Colorado gets in the way on that cattle drive. On second down and goal, he was from the one and a half, but he's popped back near the two. 
six, five to snap it, four to snap it, three to snap it. Lord needs a timeout and gets one. On third and goal from the three yard line, first timeout used in the fourth quarter, first timeout used in the second half by Nebraska, two remaining, CU has one. Third down and goal, Nebraska at the Buffalo two and a half yard line. Huskers have the eye, Davies and then Ross, Prewald in motion to block. Lord gets the snap, runs the option, pitches to Ross, behind him to the 10, to the two, and then he's drilled out of bounds. He got a deep pitch, it was behind him, he flagged it down, got to the five, and then was belted out of bounds by Thaddeus Washington, an extra linebacker at the two yard line. Here comes a kick. Dykes, 12 of 18 on the season, spot the ball at the nine, 10 in the end zone, 19 yard attempt, he's gonna have to hook it to the left. Placement down, kick is up on its way, it is good, and Nebraska gets the lead back. Eight minutes, 30 to play, fourth quarter, and after the three pointer, it's 24 to 22, Cooks, Ensuing boot sends Jeremy Bloom deep into the end zone. He follows the flight of the ball like a great center fielder as a home run pitch leaves the yard. I don't think they've had a kickoff return yet. They, ha they have one down there. Remember when the ball skittered yeah. away oh, and they tackled right. right away? Josh, that was the only one they had. Josh Davis has had one and he took it 64. Talk about maximizing your opportunities. First and 10, handed off to Calhoun. He's to the 21, driven down to the 22. A herd of Huskers, Daniel Bullocks, also Barrett Rood and Pat Ricketts. Second down. From the 22, eight to cover for CU, down now to 24-22, 7.54, fourth quarter. Clatt retreats, three-step drop, throws the pass. Jesse Wallace, the tight end, has the reception at the 25 and a half. He has stood up at the 25 and a half. Gain on the play of about three. It means third down four. Here's Gary. No turnovers yet in this game, guys, but watch Nebraska. One of the messages over here on the sidelines is force a turnover with Calhoun and now the big tight end on that reception. Look at Nebraska's defenders. They're putting a couple hats on the ball, and they're also trying to strip the football. The line of scrimmage is the 26. If the Huskers hold here and Nebraska's offense gets it back in decent field conditions, then you know what? Things are looking better for win number nine. Four down lineman for the Big Red, lone setback. That's Calhoun, quarterback Clatt, retreats, looks left the whole way, fires the pass, picked off by Hollowell, 30, 25, he's to the 20, 15, he's to the 10, and he's appended to the six yard line by Clatt, and there it is, on cue, the black shirts get the takeaway, and now the Huskers have it first down and goal at the Buffalo six, a 22 yard return, TJ with his second INT of the season, and the Big Red makes it 43 from the other ball club on 20-03, and that may very well be and Jim, part of the action on play of the game. Part of the action on that play was Demario Williams lining up at the defensive end on that right side. He was coming with pressure, and he jumped up, and Joel Clatt kind of adjusted his throw just a little bit because of that uh, lane that Demario was in. Here we go. First and goal, right side hash mark toward the north end zone. In motion goes Liley as Lohr turns and hands it off to Davies. Skips across the five and then zigzags to the four, maybe the three. Lord hands under center. Sends Liley again in motion. Hands it off to Davies again. He's to the two and then he's drilled at the two. Here's the offset eye and Lord on third down. Hands it off to Ross. Ross, no, Lord keeps it. He's to the five. He wants the goal line. He gets to the one. He's out of bounds. Near the goal line, just inside the one. Tremendous fake as he put it into the belly of Corey Ross and then operated around right end. Titus Adams was out there blocking as a tight end. And Lord stretched that six foot two inch frame as close to the pylon as he could. But the officials determined he went out at the one and a, well, a half yard line, the one foot line. And before the Huskers navigate fourth down and goal, they're going to ask for their second timeout. With Davies and Ross gets the snap, hands it off to Davies. He crunches over the goal line. Touchdown! Nothing to it, guys. Nothing to it. And they went quick. They went quick, and they needed to go quick. Go on that first sound. Don't uh, mess around with it at all. Get set, go, and go quick. And the Huskers did that, and Judd takes it in. Judd Davies scores his fifth touchdown of the year. He's been denied on a, so many fourth and short plays and so many short dive plays over the last couple of years. Wonderful redemption for this fifth year senior from Miller North, headed to medical school. A typical Cornhusker athlete, and what a dandy. Here's the point after by Dykes, and it's on its way, it is good. And with 5.48 to go, it is now 31 to 22. Nebraska opens up a nine point lead, and boy, hail the black shirts once more. The Big Red has scored 138 points off of turnovers this year. That's got to be some kind of a school record. Here's the boot by Cook, end over end Zoomer, and this one's a belt. Oh it my. is off of the upright to our left, and it caroms into the end zone. I don't think we've seen one 
That Rattle off the key of C in a long time, Adrian. Jim, that was about uh, seven eighths of the way up that goalpost too. So again, Cook delivers, and uh, he'll be an unsung hero this football game today because you you put the football in Jeremy Bloom's hands two or three trouble. times, four times a game. You got trouble, and he has kept it out of his hands, save one time. You know, you look at what's happened here over the last 40 years. It's amazing the number of championships won for so many, but not. T.J. Hollowell and Terrell Butler. Snap back to Klatt on first and 10 for the 20. He eludes the tackle of one. He's chased to the sidelines, and T.J. drills him out at the 25, as well as we've seen. Second and five from the 25. Handed off on a drop play to Calhoun. Has the 25. Rude tackles him at the 27. Holds on for dear life before reinforcements in the person of T.J. Hollowell and in the person of Nebraska's free safety man, Jarrell Pippins, arrive after a short gain. Calhoun gets it up to, I believe, about the 27. And it means third down and three at 5.20 to go. 31-22, Big Red in the fourth quarter. Jimmy, that's a play, big play by the Black Shirts. That's that counter belly option. Counter belly read is what they call it. It's a play that Nebraska's had trouble with all year. But they solved it right there. And they stopped it for a small gain. Creates a third and third about two yards to go. Two and a half between the 27 and 28. Clat under. Team down nine, back to pass, sets up short. Ball fake left, throws up the middle, and he's got Kloppenstein, the tight end, good for a first down across the 35, and he takes a seat at the 36-yard line. Not much wind to speak of. Clatt back after the shotgun, has a rush, fires the pass complete, and out of bounds is Hackett after he makes the reception across the 40, up to the 41-yard line. Hackett wide left, McCoy wide right, he's a deep ball threat. A single setback, Daniel Jolly, the freshman from San Antonio. Second and five, clad under center, retreats to throw. Looks left, looks down the field, now fires it right, and Bloom has the reception at midfield. Fabian tackles him after he gets a first down into Husker territory and tackled at the 46. 4.14 to go in the ball game, 31-22 Nebraska. Out of the shotgun, clad again, retreats, flushed out of the pocket, cocks the arm, flagged down, he's shoved out of bounds on the Nebraska bench by T.J. Hollowell. Near the line of scrimmage, might have lost one. We'll wait on the laundry, thrown as the play developed to our right. It's a holding penalty on Colorado. After the walk-off, it is first and 20 back at the Buffalo 44. Again out of the shotgun, Klatt has rushed from Demario Williams, eludes it, and on the shovel pass gets it to Calhoun, who is smothered at the 45-yard line by Demario. He reacted to one play, couldn't make it, reacted again, and made it. That Got one. Awesome. Now it's second and 19, toss play underneath for Calhoun, flag down, Calhoun out racing Huskers. He angles to the left side and is tripped up by Pat Ricketts as he raced toward the Colorado sideline at the Nebraska 47. But again, on the flag, and this could be roughing the passer on it the is. Husker front four. It is, uh, took one more step towards Clyde after he delivered the football and, and uh, that's. Roughing the passer, mm -mm -mm. 15 from the end of the run, automatic first down. That's the key to the infraction. If you take one more step to reach him, it's going to be a roughing the passer uh, penalty, and that's what happened on the play. Out of the shotgun, Calhoun into block for Clapp from the 30 left hash mark. Back to pass, buy some time. Heat on. Nebraska tackles him, and Demario gets that sack. He beats Sam Wilder, the junior from Dallas, the tackle man, and then gobbled up. Joel Clapp threw up the bones, and that's the second quarterback sack of the evening. Afternoon and into the evening. First it was Carriker, the future, and now the present, Demario Williams, Adrian. And that is a gap of 10. It'll be second and 20. Nice sack for Demario on the play that could come at a better time, Jim. From the 40, back to pass he goes. Heats some more, fires it, and it's low, but caught by Hackett. And then he steps out of bounds inside the 35 at the Nebraska 33. That is three yards shy of the original line of scrimmage. Got Bloom wide right, slot for Hackett right, wide left McCoy, lone setback Calhoun. Third and 13, Clatt pulls away, fires the pass. Bloom has it at the 30 to the 25, and he is whipped down short of a first down. Out of bounds at the 22-yard line by Jarrell Pippins. All right, fourth down, two. Colorado at the Nebraska 22, down 31-22. The Huskers lead at 2.40 in the fourth quarter. Back to pass, Clatt out of the shotgun. He's flushed to the right, heat on, he's hit. He breaks away at the 25. He's to the 20, and he's inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. Oh, my goodness. Patrick Bongo made the tackle with Titus Adams. I beg your pardon, Titus Adams made the tackle. The Huskers had a clear shot at him, and they had his shoulder pads back of the line of scrimmage. Unfortunately, the Big Red unable to make the wrap up, and Klatt keeps the drive alive from the 19-yard line. They spot him there. It's first and 10, 2.27 to go. Back to pass, Klatt has new life, fires the pass, and it is complete by McCoy. 
And he steps out of bounds after a short gain near the 16-yard line. Second down at about six from the 16. Clap in the pocket. Heat on. Throws. It's broken up by Pippins. Juan Donahoe on a crossing route that caromed off of his shoulder pad and through the end zone. Four wideouts, two to each side. Calhoun in the block. Clatt gets the snap. Dump pass for Calhoun. Rude chases him in the flat. He loses him at the 15. Calhoun to the 10. Has a first down. And he is drilled out of bounds at about the six-yard line. Still plenty of time. And that was a well-schemed play to a guy with tremendous speed. And Calhoun was able to dance through tacklers and get the necessary yardage on third down. He has been a dangerous receiver for Colorado, Brian Calhoun. 26 receptions on coming into the ball game, and a big one right there, but set up, trying to do that screen pass right in the middle, and Calhoun gets his, catches the football. Huskers react well, though, to get over there and make the stop uh, just short of the five-yard line. Bullocks and the Ricketts, first and goal CU from the Husker five and a half. Double wides right, including Bloom in a slot who goes in motion, clapped. Looks over the defense, four down lineman for the Huskers. Short drop ball, fake right, throws the pass into the end zone. Incomplete, too high, too hot for Calhoun in his mitts. Two yards across the goal line. Late coverage by Hollowell, incomplete. Burned off just a few seconds. And with 2.05 to go, here's the deal. If they get the ball in the end zone, they'll no doubt attempt the point after, and then the onside kick comes. McCoy wide left. Make it wide right, hack it wide left. Calhoun on a flank, and Bloom goes in motion. No setback, clap to throw, looks left, fires the whole way, and the pass is picked off. It's intercepted, and in the end zone, it's Pat Ricketts who takes a knee, or did he cross the goal line? He did, and Nebraska will have to snap it from just beyond the goal line as Pat Ricketts gets his second interception, and now they will confer, and will it be a touchback, or will Nebraska have to snap it from the one-yard line? It looks like that's what is going and to happen, Jim. From the one-yard line, Pat lost his spot on the field, Adrian. He made the he, interception four yards deep, and then the super student elected to come out, changed his mind, but he'd already crossed the plane. So the Huskers get the turnover, their second interception, minute 58 to go, but it is between the goal line and the one. Lord Under, Barks gets the snap and advances it across the one. TJ and... Pat Ricketts get interceptions. Ricketts first one, that's from a DB. TJ the linebacker. And Demario Williams. And Randy also, let's remember Demario Williams had an interception on the extra point try. Yep. Oh, I forgot about that. Give Give yeah. Yeah. Good so job. Two linebacker INTs and the interception by Ricketts just there. Minute 16 is Lord on second down and about nine. Takes the ball and lunges it across his left guard. Now 10, nine, they break huddle. Lord will use every ounce of that snap clock. Six. Five, four, three. He gets the snap, cradles the ball, angles it off again for one more yard. Now with 31, 30, 29. Will they have to snap it once more? They've not reset the play clock. 25, they won't have to. Nebraska gets the win. They will not have to snap it again. Mm. The ball game is over. Frank Solich has guided Nebraska to an impressive victory. The Husker head coach brings his embattled group here. Let's go down onto the field. Here's Gary. They just dumped Gatorade on uh, Frank Solich. Titus, let's talk about this game a little bit. What did this mean to win it for Frank? Uh, it felt real good. You know, th this weekend was very emotional. You know, just speaking for myself and the rest of the team, you know, we back coach, you know what I'm saying, 100% because he cares and does a lot for us. And, you know, so we just happy we went on the road and won the game. Last couple of years they've dominated in the fourth quarter, especially out here. What was the difference today? We, like we said before, this, just this whole you know, past two weeks was very emotional. We just knew we had to bring it together you know, and do what we had to do to get the job done. Congratulations. Yep, thank what you did last season in winter conditioning, what you did in spring ball, what you did in fall camp, Leading up to that opening ball game, you were going to be an outstanding football team and you weren't going to take anything from anybody. I said, I guarantee victory. And I asked the team, I said, y'all behind me? The team said, yeah. So I, I feel like that was a lot of motivation for us. And our job was to come back out here and fight hard and, and get this victory, man. It was a hard one, but we had to do what we had to do.
these guys came here because we believe in, uh, you know, believe in Coach Solich and what he's instilled in us, and that's why we came here. And uh, th these coaches this year, you know, went through a lot, and uh, Coach Sanders, especially this week, we wanted to win this one for the coaches because, uh, you know, they did, they put us uh, in the best opportunities uh, we could be in. And, uh, you know, they're here for us. This is one of my favorite wins the whole year. I mean, we're, we're on the road, and, and you know, I was glad to see all these fans that came up and watched us too. But I mean, to win in front of these Colorado fans because they were pretty brutal last year, and it feels good to win this time. We needed this one. I mean, they they got us last two years. We needed to come out here with a good win and, 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 and leave them here and, and not send them to a bowl game. Those coaches, you know, they've been under a lot of heat, and I, I think it's for no reason, too, because, I mean, I think they turned this team around, and, you know, we got a nine-win season now, and I, I don't think anybody can have too many complaints right now. It was a good thing to come out and win for this team, the coaching staff, and everybody else, and I, and I feel like they did a great job of getting us prepared. I mean, holiday, California. I loved it last time I was there. I'm going to love it this time. <laughs>